New Zealand is a place of beauty, adventure, rich culture and enormous diversity. It's a destination you just have to visit. The North Island in particular has a huge range of attractions, all within a stone's throw of each other. Being only a few hours flight from the eastern seaboard of Australia, there's no excuse not to visit again and again. Using Auckland as your starting point, the best way to truly experience New Zealand is on a road trip where there are unique experiences around every corner. By creating your own road trip, you're in control of the places you see. Following the Thermal Explorer Highway, which runs through Lake Taupo, Rotorua and Hamilton, you'll see some amazing sights and culture, like crystal clear lakes, spouting geysers, geothermal pools and springs, and the traditional home of the Maori at Te Aroa. But two hours south of Auckland, is the fascinating Hobbiton movie set. Hollywood heavyweight and proud New Zealander, Sir Peter Jackson, director of the massive Lord of the Rings franchise, was determined to shoot and produce his films in his homeland and not in Hollywood. And here in the rolling farmlands east of Hamilton is the location used in his films. One thing they have really done well here is the gardens, not only making them look like real working functional gardens, but also with a patina of age. Ed Talbot has the, their own character and personality, yeah. uh, as do does the gardeners here. Yeah. So um, we have an art director who gives us a, a brief that we need to stick to, so we don't move too far from it. Mm -hmm. um, but we are allowed some creative rain out here and it's enjoyable. A short drive back to the town of Hamilton, you can visit Hamilton Gardens, who recently won the best public garden in the world. Brainchild of landscape architect Peter Sergal, it's made up of a series of amazing themed gardens, like the stunning Italian Renaissance garden. Well, I, I can remember coming here as a kid with my father in the trailer dumping rubbish here. It was just, everything you see here was just mud and seagulls and blackberry and it had been used as a sandpit and back, back filled with rubbish. And then uh, when I was training to be a landscape architect and getting my full qualification, I joined the city council to get work experience for six months and I'm still here. Driving in New Zealand is different to driving in Australia and there are a few things that you need to be aware of before you set out. Once outside the main cities, most roads in New Zealand are only single lane each way. Passing lanes are provided at regular intervals. These should be used where possible when overtaking. Do not cross a solid yellow line on your side of the centre line to pass a vehicle. It's illegal because the line shows it's too dangerous to overtake. It's easy to underestimate travelling times in New Zealand. Distances may seem short on paper, but New Zealand roads are often narrow, winding, and vary from freeways to unsealed gravel roads. Talk to the locals about how long it's really going to take you to get there. And remember, it's always a good idea to take regular breaks to keep fresh and experience the journey. On those small narrow roads, there is some stunning scenery to take in, but also some small tight corners. So always follow the road signs for suggested speeds. And for more tips on driving in New Zealand, visit this website so you can have the best possible trip around the North Island. <laughs>